So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Adam alayhi salam and Hawa, what did he say to them? He said to them, Alam anhakuma antilkum as shajara. Did I not forbid you from that tree? reminding them. So Allah asked them, Alam, did I not forbid you? Do you remember? They said, yes. What happened at that moment when they ate from the tree or they approached the tree? There was actually a concealing. There, 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 was, um, there was a part of their body, which was the aura. It was concealed with light, with nur. Obviously, yes, there was you know, intimate activities, but in general cases, they weren't naked running around. When they took from the tree, that nur went away. And so they were naked. And when we say that word naked, obviously some people, well, majority of us, you know, we think, oh my God, you know, this word, nudity or naked, it does trigger something inside of us. It triggers our senses. That's because it is our instinctive nature that Allah has created that we are shy. We are shy. Even a child, seven years old, six, five, four years old, well, even three years old. There comes a stage where they're shy. My daughter is now nearly, nearly three years old. When she wets her nappy, she's shy. And I think to myself, how can she be shy? I never taught her to be shy about that, but she's shy. My son is two, three years old. He's shy. He goes to the toilet, something, he's shy. But it is an instinctive nature in a human being to be shy. You can get rid of that shame by committing the haram. And then Allah says, like zina, for example, when you come close to it, it involves nudity. Allah says, Wasa'a sabila, the end road of it is really bad. Your shame goes away, everything. Now, look at the combination here. Adam alayhi salam hawa ate or took from this tree. Suddenly, the shame came to them. From what? from less covering, less concealment. What is the combination between? Now, obviously, this was a disobedience. It was a sin. It was a minor sin, but it was a sin. That minor sin. What is the combination between the minor sin of, of approaching the tree and then revealing the aura? This is something extraordinary. What is the relationship between committing that sin and the aura being revealed? And so they were shameful. This is because every sin, my dear brothers and sisters, leads to immorality. It leads us to desensitization. You know what desensitization is? Like we're sensitive towards important things. Every sin makes you become desensitized. You no longer care about sins anymore. And even some people, they go very far to the point where it becomes very normal. Adultery is normal. Kissing a girl is normal. Uh, you know, uh, sweet words in seclusion is normal. Forget about that. It's normal now, in some, and I hate to say it, but now it's even among the Muslims themselves. Homosexuality is normal. Homosexuality is normal to some people. Normal. Desensitized. And I repeat, there was, subhanAllah, one time, went to this park, took my children there, and saw this little girl, I've said it to you before, about six, seven years old, she's trying to play on the monkey bars. Her mother, and she was wearing a short skirt, the little girl. And the mother said, why don't you toss over, twist over upside down. The little girl said to her mother, she said to her mother, I'm wearing a skirt, mum, meaning I'm shy. I, my underwear will show. That's what she's saying. Her mother said to her, don't worry, you're still a little girl, you can do it. So the girl now, what happened? The mother's teaching made the girl think it's okay. This is the first this is the beginning, the first step to shame, to, to lack of shame, desensitization. Now, Adai Salam ate from the tree and, and, or approached the tree in Hawa, and so the aura was shown. There is a combination between sin and immorality, sin and indecency, sin and lack of shame. Why did Adai Salam and Hawa eat from the tree? Didn't they know? Yes, they knew. Knowledge, but there was something else. The nafs. It is curiosity. I told you before, why do human beings say to themselves, I'm not going to go too deep. But then they find themselves going deeper. Because inside of our bodies, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah has created a test. Something that we can grow out of and become better human beings, or we can obey and become worse human beings. It is curiosity and desire. 
So when he told them, don't eat from the tree, there had to be a secret to that tree. Akid fiha sir. There has to be a secret to it. I mentioned this last week. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he forbids something, the curiosity of the human being and his desires say to him, why can't I? Why? Why can't I go and do this? Why has God forbidden that? I don't understand that concept. And so you find, for example, a Muslim sister refuses to wear the hijab because she doesn't understand the concept. Why should I wear it? I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense to me. Tayyib, don't you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who recommended it for you? Isn't, shouldn't that be enough? If you know Allah, if you really know Allah, you will trust Allah. A man says, why should I pray? I'm a good person. Prayer is meant to make me become a better person. I'm already a good person. Tayyib again. Although you probably lack a lot of knowledge, deep ignorance in, 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 in the uh, benefits of prayer. At least, who is the one who commanded you with it? Allah. Do you know Allah? Do you trust Allah? Tayyib. Obey Him. And watch what happens afterwards. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu prayed even though Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala had forgiven him all his sins, past, present and future. Yet he stayed in the nights until his feet cracked open and pus would excrete from them. Praying. أَفَلَا أَكُونُ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا Shall not be a thankful servant to Allah in the least? Sometimes Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala tests us so that we can grow and become better mu'mineen by forbidding certain things from us.